I have a pen. Do you have a pineapple pen? No, I only have oranges. Oh, an orange pen. Okay, that's all right then. That's not as bad as I thought. Hello, everybody. This is our second... Oh, shit. I need to change shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is our second podcast. We are going to be talking about the gaming industry. Let's have a little introduction of everybody that's here. You know Smock. You know Hatter. And now we have Ash Destroyer of Lungs with us today. Because that's what I called him. <laughs> and that's your little title above your head. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Ash? I am a chain smoker who never leaves the house and has recently lost his life to video games. Would you say Again. you are an introverted chain smoker by chance? I guess you say you could say that, yeah. I see, I see. Okay. Tell tell us tell us a little more. What what sort of games are you into? I mostly play roguelikes. Okay. So for instance, subterrain Salt and Sanctuary. Rogue Legacy? Have you played Rogue Legacy yet? Stardew Valley. Uh, Star- I've been Star- checked, Valley. I have checked it out. It does. Um, House of Many Doors. Um, that hasn't been released yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Ooh, that sounds fun. Um, obviously, Nuclear Throne, yeah. which, Jay, I believe you got me that one. I don't know what you're talking about. You, you must be drunk. And uh, Sunless Sea. Know. And so let's Which see. Is yeah. an you won those. That's different. You won those. So that's okay. I didn't and get Darkwood. you those. Yeah, Darkwood what's Darkwood like? I'm kind of curious. Um, it's still, an, it's still an early access. Yeah, okay. But, and it is pretty difficult, but it is, it, it's a decent. I do recommend checking it out. Sweet. I also am a big fan of the Elder Scrolls series, as everyone is. I'm pretty sure And I the definitely yeah. prefer the third one. The third one. No, let's say you're an Elder Scrolls fan if you haven't played Morrowind. Yeah, I Morrowind. haven't, but I see. I started with uh, Oblivion, so like I don't know. I didn't really. I that wasn't huge. Game. I wasn't huge into PC gaming at the time, and I heard that was the only way you could play it. It is on console, but it's not as good on console. Oh, okay. There's a game called Talkman. That's amazing. No, why did you do that? Oh, fuck you! I swear to God. I, oh man, I'm so annoyed. You're, I'm trying to change what everything's said here, but it's like, nope, we're gonna revert back to what you just had a second ago. Sorry, I am very angry at the moment with this stupid fucking the gaming industry. There we go. Could have been worse. At least you're not addicted to Stardew Valley. Uh, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, damn it, I need to change the timer on that. Uh, commands, shoutouts, god damn it, why is it, right, okay, so, if we edit this, and cool down, is, what, in minutes, minutes, how the hell do we change the cooldown on that, we just change the cooldown to nothing, I believe, uh, either, you know, zero or one minute is the minimum, yeah, okay, zero. That's fine. You can just shout. Anyway, so that's a bit about Ash, because he's cool and very handsome. Let's not forget how handsome he is. It's Prompto! Prompto! He's our he's our, our registered Prompto at this point. Anyway, guys, we are going to be talking about the gaming industry and our words on that and what we think about the gaming industry. Now, I think a lot of things, but I know a certain somebody in this room has his own opinions on these. Smock, why don't you start us off on what you think about the gaming industry and what you, I guess, despise about it most? Yay, let's trigger everybody. Um, so, I believe that uh, while uh, some games are pretty cool these days, still there are really cool games uh, released, the gaming industry went shit it's mostly uh quantity over quality and there are several uh reasons to that i was gonna say when did you notice (coughs) really that the well yeah call of duty is a prime example of that really but um when did you notice that the, the the industry was kind of changing that way uh to be honest i 
never uh, like notice it all at once mm -hmm. it was step by step pretty much uh, the thing about today's gaming industry uh, is that uh, yeah Tomic's great shout out Th thanks for that one <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, while the games I uh, I don't measure games by the by their playtime alone, mm. but how long do they actually keep you entertained? And okay. uh, back in the day, uh, you could uh, buy a game for like fifteen bucks mm -hmm. and have one hundred or two hundred hours of fun at least with those. Okay, yeah. While today you pay sixty bucks, and if you get to play it for more than 10 hours you're supposed to be super happy while uh, actually the development of the games is way cheaper than it was back then it no longer requires any special equipment just fast enough computers uh, the reason to why the prices went so sky high uh, there are actually two. One is that uh, publishers are trying to push the prices as high as possible while also giving uh, the developers only certain amount of time to finish the game and then don't give a shit how buggy it will be, how little <coughs> of the... Of the uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say the original a perfect plant example is uh, of, of how much the... Has anybody here played Sonic Boom? We didn't nope. discuss Sonic Boom. Oh man, but I know. Look, I don't. I don't. But I, I watched um, Game Grumps play it, and fuck, wow, that was like they were talking about this and going, uh, "This game really does not feel finished." This, I feel like we're alpha testing this or beta testing this because this is I ridiculous. I actually played Sonic Boom because I'm a really? massive Son. I'm a massive Sega fan. Okay. Sega. 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 You, you know crazy. my point. The epitome of programming. I agree with you there. It's amazing. Man, I, I was watching them, and Barry, who's their editor, uh, is like, okay, so I'm going through this, and he's going frame by frame, because if there's bits in there, and it's like they're walking on air. I'm like, what the fuck? And this is meant to be a pre-rendered scene. So it's like, come on, do this bit at least, right, guys? It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, so what other reasons? Do, so you think that... The uh, the publishers put up the prices, didn't give developers time to actually make the games properly, and so what? They are trying to get more money for less work. Exactly, um, many uh, uh, indie games with tiny freaking uh, uh, spending money, whatever that basically where anything it was. published by Chucklefish are are often far better than the than very similar games uh, from the huge companies mm -hmm. because uh, the uh, the indie guys prefer to actually make the make their games better they actually try to make the games they would like to play while publishers are just trying, blindly trying to look for the games that will sell, hmm. even if it's the last game they ever sell, because they'll just put a sky high price and hope that that, that in the first two weeks they sell so much because of their advertisement, not only on sites, on internet sites, or through Twitch uh, viewership through whatever they can even find out there there's so many ways they do it uh, that they no they no longer hope they know that the that there will be so many mindfuck mindfuck players that will buy it right off the bat or pre-order it without the option to take the money back that they don't give a shit. They sold their game. It's shit. Who cares? It was on time. 
That's all that matters to them. Yeah, it's, well, a, it's they, a tough one. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's the uh, thing, important thing to, to hear out though is that they, they are, I think uh, to, uh, the key point is the key word is the gaming industry, and a lot of these are businesses. Yes, and being publishers businesses, are businesses at the end of the day. They, they, they usually are out to basically be getting the uh, maximum amount of milk. Uh, the minimum amount of moo. Mm. Although they don't really care too much if there's a lot of mooing, as long as they, as long as they get pl still get plenty of milk. It's it's a, a hard one to boil down to anyone's fault. I do think that a lot of things have changed of late. There is a lot. Inflation. Of, hmm? Inflation is it? Inflation. Well, well I mean, like yeah, obviously things have become games more are going to get more well, expensive. Yeah, they are going to be more yeah, expensive. But, from it. but while the thing, the other things in the time, uh, went three, four times uh, more expensive for the same amount or even better quality, the games went uh, four times, five times, ten times more expensive for ten times less fun. Mm. Well, I guess you can to be less. It's it's a hard it. one. And the the thing is that the, the making games is not only cheaper but much easier nowadays. Mm. The, then uh, we go to another point that uh, because of that uh, the fact that publishers try to milk developers, they also are both them and the players are unsatisfied with the quality of the final product, and. Uh, many of those uh, developing studios just disappear. They are all uh, fired because something wasn't right. The publish, uh, even though the publisher didn't uh, even take into consideration if what they request is even possible to make in that time, they gave to them. Uh, uh, due to this, more and more complete amateurs uh, try to get get the jobs in uh, either get the jobs in those uh, uh, um, what's his face companies uh, in, in those types of companies and then uh, or or just uh, make uh, indie games very similar to the shit ones uh, themselves because even though they were shit they still sold they still earned a lot of money, so why not make another one that is just like that, just but reskinned? And then we end up with even more expensive shit on the market. Well, do you not think that uh, something like Steam, who can put things out digitally, can bring down those prices? I mean, I look at like the PlayStation Network and stuff, because I got a PS4 and stuff, and it's like, wow, that game is 70 pounds or 70 euro. That's ridiculous. It's straight up crazy. And I understand the reason for a console versus um, having a PC and how things are a lot cheaper on a PC, but you just got to know what you got what you got to do and you don't know if your game is going to be able to or the game is going to run on a PC because everybody's PC is going to be different. Whereas you put something on a console, you know it's going to work. And I think for people it's about easier and knowing that yes this game is going to work and then of course you have the moms coming in and asking about the uh the xbox 4 and the playstation 360 and getting everything confused and you'd never know what really they want um that 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 hurt my feelings just which which the the the, the ps360 or the playstation 360 or the the xbox 4 It's both, isn't it? Both of those hurt you. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a console player. I, I bought F uh, Final Fantasy 15 on console mainly because it's not out on PC. That was my reason for it. Well, to be fair, most people around our age groups would be gamers because that's what we were raised on. Hmm. Not many of us actually owned a PC to play on. Also, I... PC gaming was fucking awful. Oh, back like, in the day, it was so bad. At least 30 years. Like, Whereas okay. console gaming has had a steady growth. Yes. PCs haven't been really 
even considered till maybe I think 2010. Yeah, I thought I think you yeah. might be all right with that, with the release of Steam and different things like that. Hopefully, right. the hopefully only the last decade has seen C gaming growth. Hmm. With the growth of YouTube, the growth of Twitch, the constant overpowering, menacing strength that is Valve, mm. Steam, and Two, Blizzard, all of, but PC gaming in general has a lot more indie games. So you can slam down about 15 bucks and get a game that will last you forever. Mm. Not to mention the modding communities always manage to make something to keep the game fresh. Like That's very true, yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of Skywind. Mm. Project to update all of the engines and graphics for Morrowind. Yes, I have heard that. Morrowind is like a decade or so old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> still very much playable just as a base game. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot in that. There's a lot in that game. Now, the next thing you got to ask is about DLC. Like, I remember back in the day when you got... I, one of my biggest things that I remembered was uh, Icewind Dale. I played that a lot as a kid. And I really, really enjoyed it. And then they released an expansion pack. Not DLC, an expansion pack. And that gave you like another full game on top of it which made the game freaking huge it was so big and it took so much time to actually f- play it you actually had to play it through twice because you still weren't a high enough level to beat it which is crazy you know you'll have to save your I characters saw, saw go the whole way back and do it again and the, they they really put a lot of time and effort into it and it seems that it you know they kind of throw DLC out but there's almost like Mickey Mouse DLC you know it's like oh you got a new gun or a skin for your gun and they're charging people for it and I think that's a bit eh, I don't know but I have any dollars to make my gun look digital like digital looking mm. yeah put urban camo on my gun I shouldn't have to <laughs> yeah. one, one thing I'm thinking of and like um, like for the um the X, the Xbox um, with the uh, Mortal Kombat X. Mm-hmm. The like if you like if you pre-ordered, right? You got um, I can't remember the name, but you got you got you got one of the guys unlocked. Right. As basically built already built into the game. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't pre-order it, the way you ha- the way you got it then was buying it as DLC. Yeah, see, that I'm not cool with. Stuff like actual fighters in game. What was it? Um, fucking, uh, damn it. It came out on Xbox One. It was a re release of a really old game. Um, oh, crap, I can't remember it. But you had like three characters. Re releases. Yeah, re releases are another thing again. But you you had like four or five characters you could pick up from, and then every other fighter was DLC. Like that's, that's quite crazy. ridiculous. That is crazy. Another, that, another but the game thing was free. With the DLC thing is that um, the uh, games back in the day not only were huge, but they were the price of of what DLCs are now. Mm. So back then, you could uh, buy a game for 15 bucks, get a huge game and a hundred of hours of fun with it, and then after some time, there was a five bucks or even sometimes free expansion pack, DLC, patch, whatever, that added pretty much another uh, um, full game, just like you mentioned, Jake. Yeah, I now agree, yeah. you pay you pay sixty bucks mm. for a mediocre game, and then you have an option to buy to pay another sixty for a for a DLC that that adds like twenty percent of what the original it, uh, bad enough game gave you, and then another twenty bucks for another small DLC that gave you pretty much nothing, mm. and then you realize 
you spend 150 bucks on a game that is worse than a 50 15 bucks one mm. what the fuck what the fuck am i doing with my life it's i don't think it's, it's such a waste it's incredible that there are people that uh that actually buy it and the and the people that do it are one of the main reasons why the uh, prices are so sky high. I've often thought about that. If no one buys it, then that means that either companies go out of business or they have to lower the price, right? But they'd probably forget about lowering their prices and just go out of business because it's easier to set up another one. Also, Jawa, yes, you're absolutely right. It's called Killer Instinct. I couldn't think of the name, uh, but that's the, how that works. Uh, also, 60 euro for DLC. I've never seen that except for in one game. And you know what that game was? Train Simulator. I think it was 2014, <laughs> right? If you buy all the DLC for that game, it's 1,200 euro for all of the DLC for that game. That's nuts. That is insane. I want to find all the people that that bought at least half of that and then murder them just ah, so they no. do not multiply. No, no. What you need them to do is like share their Steam account with you because that is a great game and we should all play it. No, you should marry them Jeez. because they have that much money. Oh, yeah, they've got money, of trains, course. And they're obviously rich as fuck. Well. That's, that's yeah. a real smart idea. Yeah. Do, I, do I look like a train enthusiast? Maybe you are. Maybe that's what you gotta do to get what you need, huh? Like free get. Uh, I'll, I'll just I actually hate that. trains. Somet <laughs> sometimes for like free games, some DLC is okay. You know, like, like you yeah. know, like in, like sm like Smite is free. You, you expect some stuff to be uh, gotten through, um, you know, through uh, through paying a little bit of cash. You know, and for mm -hmm. like I think it's like I think it's doing like eighteen 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 pound. Okay. And you can basically unlock all the characters. Oh right. And that, like, like, like you can buy them individually, or you can buy like for like eighteen pound, you can like unlock them, unlock them all. Perfectly. I don't think we should really count mobas though. You think Why mobas not? are generally just a completely different ball field? I believe they are first -person that shooter. what most mobas do is actually cool because they give the game pretty much to everybody who wants it and then you can pay them pretty much it's like uh, like a donation because you don't really get anything that will that will make the game easier for you but you get to look cooler and some cosmetics and they get money to do more things to improve their game or start another just as good one yeah, like, well, you, you know, can having just... a tournament and where their main prize is a million dollars. You know, stuff like that. Well, you can just slam down five dollars, get the starting pack for League of Legends, and then buy Fiddlesticks and be the most powerful man alive. Yeah, there's that too. But I did. That's what I did. That's how I'm a pro. <laughs> I know how powerful Fiddlesticks can be, especially on the Howling Abyss. No, that's not... The... Yeah, that that's the... Uh, a ram map, right? Is it? Yes, Howling Abysses. Yeah. Yeah. Sticks is, so is he's meant for jungling. He can all agree on that. But he never fits fitted my playstyle. Hmm. Well, I mean, how the, are you the, trying the, to play? The newer Fiddlesticks are actually better. I can I can actually play them. But back in the seasons one to three. Whenever I felt like playing random, and then random gave me field sticks. Well, shit. The team is <laughs> gonna play four v five this time. I think. I think. I think. Uh, perhaps one of the hard parts to major is you have to consider, like, uh, if you consider as a purchase, as a purchase, as a bit of a tricky because it is a, like bit of a buyer's beware thing. But like, like I, I, I could like I could end up I could go and spend out. Like I, I could go out to like spend uh, forty five pound on a game. That might spend a few hours on and quickly go bored with. <coughs> and, then, and then what I could do is I could maybe go and buy like um, sorry, like like what is it like like seven or eight? Pa I, I could buy like seven eight seven or eight pounds for some of it. Okay, like uh, I think buying of Isaac is kind of like, might be a bit more, mm. but you know it's, it's definitely not more. Going to be more than fifteen quid there, but 
Like I, I, I could imagine that. Like if I was to get into that, I could imagine that uh, I could go in and I could easily get hooked. You know, I could, I, I could probably uh, keep, uh, quite easily get racking up the hours once I actually got hooked onto that game because, mm. because uh, in some ways, I think I think it's that they put so like they put these days get games have so much more being invested i think into graphics than into necessarily into the actual game amen sister and of of course you you appreciate some good graphics but like like you, like you can you can play you can play uh, like uh, like binding of isaac isn't is hardly a um, like a high graphic game but yes look at the uh, it's a s- simple visual game, but look look at the potential gameplay on there compared to, uh, like um, uh, I don't know, I can't really think of a, but like I can't really think of a, of a high adventure game that would be offhand. But you know, like because uh, I mean, there, as I said, there is a matter of taste. Because like, um, like I, I bought for that for, and honestly. I played a little bit on there, and then I just kind of lost interest. I, I just didn't really... I'm not going to go saying it's not a good game. It's just that it didn't really hook me. Mm. But, uh, but I'd spent quite a lot on, on, on that. Like, but I'd, I'd spent... I'd bought on some cheaper games. So I've um, uh, spent, uh, spent, uh, spent a good amount more time on I know what you mean. I bought Fallout 4. Uh, I bought it at a midnight launch, so I waited around and I got my Pip Boy and I did everything there. And I'm really, you know what? I still, I'm very happy with the purchase. The only thing about it is I haven't really gone back to it. Now I bought the season pass as well, so there's loads for me to fucking do in it. But I kind of forget to go back to it, mainly because I'm on the PC the whole time. That and, and it's on Netflix for the most part, or watching Russian shows, one or the other. Um, but you know, I'm still happy. Very being waifu. <laughs> She's my Russian waifu. She's my waifu for life. Um, but yeah, but... it's it's hard to say because there are some games that are about either repetibility or sinking in hours, and then there are sto- there's other ones like um uh oh what is it called? Uh, hang on a sec. I'm going to bring up my list of games. Uh, brothers, Brothers, Brothers. Is it just called Brothers? Yes. A br- brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. I've beaten it in one sitting of a stream. So about three to four hours. Right? But that's what it was. The, the game was about telling a story. And I really enjoyed it. And it was, you know, it was a good game. I was happy with it. But you take the same thing now with like, uh, what else do I have in here? Danganronpa. Right, they both are storytelling games, but that is infinitely longer. I have already sunk in uh, twenty-one pri- hours into Danganronpa Two. Are the prices more or less the same, or is that prior game actually um, cheaper? Let's find out. Actually, here, let's go to Brothers, and we'll go to the store page. And right now, Brothers is fifteen quid. Now, Danganronpa 2 we'll have a look at. Danganronpa is 27. 27.99. Even if it's uh, a more expensive, 15 quaint for a game that you can finish in like 3 or 4 hours? Mm-hmm. That's... No, sir. It doesn't matter how great is the story. That's unacceptable. But, like it... What uh, other thing I would get is that is down to like a, like a good game has uh, repl- uh, replayability value, and what, what, to be fair, like what, one part of that is like uh, like as uh, consumer wise, like you can go in and say, well, here's a review. We recommend that this probably go last you list on a game. Hmm. It's, it gets high reviews. You might go in, you might like it, or might not. You know. Yeah. Uh, quick, like, but you won't. Really, the trouble is, you won't know if you were, if you a, a, after if you really thought it was a good value game because until you've played for it and seen whether you've been if you found it was worth playing through, or like or perhaps you've played for it and then do you see any replayability and 
there's not any replay really any replayability after go, going through it once, and you paid quite a lot of money for to actually get that get that particular game. It's um, and, and and obviously it's uh, it's like well that, that was a good game, but it, like it would have been more uh, it would have been it's for the amount I paid it wasn't really as much time of fun as I would have liked, you know? Mm. And uh, I can't, you know, and going back, I get, like, you might go back, maybe you'll play it, and perhaps a few years later, you might replay it for, like, like uh, some kind of nostalgia value, maybe. It's... it's it's a hard one to look at, really, because, like, okay, you take Mario, for instance. Mario 64, right? There's, I don't know, a hundred and... Uh, there's more than 100 stars in it and that's the whole point is you're going around from place to place collecting all the stars right now some people go back to them and be like oh man i love that game it was so good i could totally play it again but you know what you don't have to i don't have to go back and play um gears of war the whole gears of war series i've beaten dark souls 1 well forget about dark souls 2 because i haven't gotten that far in it and dark souls 3 but do you know what i want to do i want to go back to it and play it as a certain character and play that same character through each of the three games so i don't have to do that once i've beaten the game is it replay value no because it's the same fucking enemies it's the same shit over and over again the bosses are the same everything's the same I think we just heard someone die. Um, but, you yeah, know... It's my mouse. Ra- yeah, oh, that's okay. What, what I mean, the question is, uh, how it, like, you, I'm not saying you necessarily will or won't have to go back. It's a question of, like, if, could you finish it and feel that you, uh, that it, uh, not necessarily that you will go back, but that it was worth, something that was a game worth going back to playing to? I agree with you. Sometimes I feel that way, and then there's sometimes I don't. I played through Life is Strange, and I loved every second of that. I really did. I thought it was a really great game, really well done, (coughs) nice art style, looked good, great story, simple controls. It was all, wasn't anything too, like, complicated. It's very much a simple walk around story, that type of game. (coughs) I like those type of games. But but covering replayability, mm -hmm. sorry to cut you off. You're okay. But, um, Salt and Sanctuary. Sure. I know this is a bit more home turf for you, Jay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm pretty sure both of the other two here watched you stream it. Yeah, they did. But I had finished it within about five hours. Oh, really? Okay. This is actually pretty decent. I guess mm-hmm. Dark Souls trained me well. Yeah, it would do. That was for five hours of my time. Mm-hmm. While absorbing as much of the story as I could. Hmm. And I still love to go back to that game. I totally agree that with was you. About twenty dollars out of my pocket at the time. Mm. Not sure how much it was for you. I bought it but... twice. <laughs> bought it twice. I Jeez. bought it twice. I have it on the PS4 as well. <laughs> but yeah. well, there's my point. So that that all in all would be about thirty to forty dollars. Sure. Yeah. Um, Australian. And yet. Obviously, you bought it twice. Mm-hmm. Even for how short it can be, oh yeah, it's obviously got a lot of like replayability. Like you can go into New Game Plus and have all the enemies harder. You can do challenge mode. Oh, there's a challenge can... mode as well, is there? Um, yeah, you can have like or or only, so you can only use the or weapon. Oh, Set it right. so you can only use the big ladle. Set okay. it so you can you can't use any um weapons and armor, apart from the peasant outfit and the pitchfork. Oh wow. Um, one of the challenge modes is hard mode, which is the basic Iron Man mode. Okay. One death, it's all oh. over. Oh Jesus. Um. If anyone has beaten that, I would marry them just because <laughs> that is. I don't legendary. care if the 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 race or sex of the person who does that just if you guys are watching and you've done this please contact uh the introverted smoker on twitch and uh you have a marriage proposal ready for you and i do require proof by the way 
<laughs> I like to go back to Life in the Strange. I'd, like Life in the Strange. I think mm. uh, one special thing like that and the like Telltale, Telltale games. I think uh, a bit of a key point there is that a good way to know that that was a good value of money is that like some some games are aren't necessarily about about replay about, mm. uh, about replayability value, but uh, like something like uh, Life is Strange or Telltale games. The way to tell that that you got value for money with those games is not necessarily, although you can replay back and get, you know, a different outcome probably. Mm. Um, the fun for them is uh, is less about the fact that you can go back, as it it's more about the like the value you get for there is the anticipation to see to play the next episode of the thing. Mm. Like. Um, was it like you're wanting to? Was it The Walking Dead? I think it was. That... Uh, there's The Walking Dead. I want to play that, but I also really I'm kind of super looking forward to The Wolf Among Us season two. If they bother, I know they have a lot of stuff, guys. I'm really sorry, if Telltale. If you guys are watching, I'm really sorry. I love your stuff. Please make it. Everybody's waiting. For the it. Wolf Among Us was was uh, promised like what four years ago, and we still haven't seen it. Was it promised the four second, years ago? The, the second, the second season. Really? If it was it was promised very soon after the first season was finished. I don't think they have well, it on their list yeah. of games that they need to make, as in on their, their wiki. You want to discuss Broken Promises? Let's oh. discuss Half-Life 3. <laughs> yeah, I'm going there. I'm you want to hear there. another promise that was super broken? Steve How about Valve? No Man's Sky? No Man's Sky, It's guys? not a broken promise. Oh, it is? Promise oh, that everyone had a Oh man, that was no, the biggest No, it's too early. Spot. I wanted, I wanted to use uh, my uh, No Man's Sky as a as a as a uh, draw man. Do you know what? We um, have like twenty three minutes. We're gonna talk about No Man's Sky for the rest of <clears> this, <throat> okay? No, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because No Man's Sky and the developers behind that are horrible human peoples. Because they're just. They drive me up the wall. This is not what the gaming industry is meant to be about, you know? It's meant to be putting out quality stuff, having people buy it, enjoy it, and then go off and they can go make more. That's the whole thing. That's why I'm not huge into pirating games. I would rather buy the game if I possibly can, unless it's a game you can't get anymore. That's the only time I'm like, uh, let's see if someone's put it up somewhere. Because there's games out there that you just you just really can't. I remember them, and I'm fucking kicking myself that I never beat them. But the thing with No Man's Sky is, the developers were like, oh yeah, we're going to do all of this. And they pitched it at Sony, and Sony like, oh man, this this is amazing. Yeah, okay, let's, let's run with this. And they funded them. And then, in the end, they were like, oh yeah, here it is, okay, bye. And they disappeared. They literally fucking disappeared. So Sony can't at come some, after them or anything. They took their money and At some point, ran. there was there was a sneakily uh, released tiny patch to make the game work a bit better and giving them some really little things, mm. but it's still nowhere near where where what they promised. Oh no, no, it's it's ridiculous and it's a disgrace, really. But again, that's not a publisher thing. That is. The developers. The developers did that. So we can't always just point the fingers at the publishers. Now, if it's their fault and they're going on like, no, no, we need this done by this. Has to have these things. You either do it or we fire you. Then, yeah, that's shitty and that's an awful thing to do. This is like, you don't tell an artist they need to have this done by a certain time. An artist will produce what they need to. Hmm? What my brother does. Yeah. Um, for a bit of um context, my brother is a rapper. Right. I do, um, the artwork for his stuff. So I do the logos, album art. Cool. All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I do promotion. I handle some of the editing. Currently, I'm working on videos. Sometimes he'll be like, I need it done by this, or I need it done soon. Right. Because he gives a deadline, but he doesn't specify when it is. Okay. 
which is much worse. Mm. And this is actually what a lot of game publishers do. Like, Nintendo does this constantly. But because it's Nintendo, no one actually pays attention. Yeah, that's it. They kind of get off scot-free as they, oh, we're just the fun people. Don't mind us. Don't hold us up to anything. Basically, people like to straw man companies like Ubisoft and mm-hmm. Treyarch and all that. Basically, any publisher does that. Apart from a few indie publishers like Chucklefish, Scar Studios. The Scar oh. Studios are both their own publishers and the developers at the same time. That's why they're an indie company. An indie company literally means that they do not have anybody publishing them. I only found but this out recently. I was like, what? <laughs> um, Chucklefish is the publisher, mm-hmm. but they always tweet that people write. Like, so far, I think Chucklefish has, re- has published Stardew Valley, Starbound, various other games that probably have the word star in them. Star in them, yeah. The, the difference between uh, Chucklefish and uh, the mo- most publishers is that instead of uh, requesting that you have to do this and this in the, in certain time, they just help uh, small developers for a percentage of the prices of the, of the money that the game earns. That's the general that, idea. That, is, that is what publishers used to be. Are you saying that publishers are not like that anymore? I will, I will... No, back back in the day, publishers took a percentage of the of the money mm-hmm. and buy the game for advertising it and publishing it. Yeah, spending their money uh, for actually producing it. The the DVDs, uh, the or whatever was yeah, needed. Yeah, whatever they're putting the money up. <clears throat> uh, and didn't request anything. They just said they will test it, and if they like it. They will they will publish it for them. They so the developers don't have to pay any extra. Now mm. publishers this... have help with advertising, but developers not only have to develop the game, they have to make the game what uh, uh, what the publisher wants it to be. The publisher sets the price, and developers have no say in it most of the time. And uh, it's a and the and most money instead of going to uh, the developers like back in the day now goes to publishers developers oh. get really small part of the money right now hmm. even though they do that. most yeah. of the work and they have to spend money for producing the, the for DVDs if the if the uh, game are is even uh, published as well in the old way <clears throat> well I'm glad you brought that up because I actually have a very decent counterpoint for that a lot of game studios now um, don't fund their own work a lot of developers end up getting funded by their promoters and once you are the person funding the development of the game you're promoting you have free reign to tell them what you want to make the game something that is worthy of you promoting it. Hmm. That is true. So, but the thing is, back in the day, it was a small percent that publisher took. Now, they they only give a fixed amount of money to them. And uh, developers either uh, only get a small percent of the sales themselves after it is published. Or they just get that fixed amount of money and not a penny more no matter how much the game sells for well that's the thing that's not because the develop the promoters are so much as being greedy as they are trying to make up for the money that they lost with giving the finances to develop the game and like jay just said in the chat they do need to if the developers don't want their game to be controlled by their promoter 
they need to fund it themselves through Kickstarter or Patreon, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And Do Twitch. you know what the biggest Kickstarter game is? I can't say I do. It's a little I'm game gonna... called Star Citizen. Have I've you guys never played? heard of it. I you... feel like okay, it. right. Have you ever heard of a game called Freelancer? Nope. No, okay. It's a space game. It's really old at this point, um, but it had some nice flying mechanics. And it was a game that myself and my friend Ivan played so much when we were kids. This is the, some of the same team that were on that. And they are making what is basically a real-life space simulator. Everything's in first person. When you get into the cockpit of the ship, everything's in first person. There's flying around mechanics of your ships. There's also the ground points. So it's an FPS. You know, so it's like Call of Duty, like those. You'll have guns. You can buy guns. You can go into arenas. You can do kind of a lot of things in it. It's amazing. But the game looks gorgeous. It is all funded by people who want the game to succeed. And they are constantly pumping out information about the game. Constantly. You can, if you want to know where they are on a ship that you like, you can go and look at that and see, yeah, we've got the schematics down. We need, we need to test fly it first before we put it through. Um, we're having problems with this and that. We'll get on that. Um, and they'll, you can have a full hundred and percent look at everything they're doing now to me that seems like the right way to do things well in that regard it seems that publisher is less so a big company than it is the actual fan base Mm. which does seem like a really good way to do it except the fact that it's very unreliable. Let's see as we have it. covered, mm. some some developers will just take the money and piss off. Yeah. Unfinished game or not. They just take the cash and then they're gone. Which, obviously, it is a shame. you, it is a, shame. No, a normal no. person, has put hundreds and hundreds of dollars into this game to see it succeed, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden the developers just Spanish with all of your money that would be a very big kick in the teeth yeah oh so i guess yeah this is this is a way like promote as much as smock has made it quite clear that he hates the idea of big companies being publishers for games Mm. they do hold us back from a lot of distress with self-funded companies because it's yeah. hard to eat, eat, get a loan, mm. or you have to get it crowdfunded. Mm. And the worst thing about crowdfunding is that you can easily vanish at any point in time, and no one can do anything about it. No, no. It is a shame that but that is a, the world we live in. Well, in, in a, the day, a uh, developing games was more expensive, and the most developers Clean. had to had to fund themselves they only got help with actually publishing the game hmm. but they had to do the expenses for for produ- for producing for developing the game themselves and the problem wasn't there even though it was actually more expensive than it is right now actually plus, statistics plus thinking... back in plus back in the day uh yeah, uh, I'm gonna bring out two points now. Actually, back in the well, day, on, before you, you continue, uh, if you me... wanted to to develop a game, you 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 had to either go through a ton of books to learn the the programming language, or uh, have someone who already does it teach you. Right now, you don't have to do this because you can just learn the very basics of the programming itself. And then you can learn the uh, the commands, or even you don't actually even have to learn them. You can just look them up constantly on the websites, and that would be okay if they actually did this. But most of the time, they're using uh, software 
that pretty much writes the game for them. They just click things, which uh, uh, leads us to the thing that there's a difference between a programmer uh, of which most actually write the programs, games, whatever, in things like Notepad and put everything, input everything uh, there themselves and uh, programming technicians or, if, or information technicians that use the programs, that's the software that uh, makes the writing for themselves. They just give it simple pointers. Most of those softwares are, even though are that are used uh, constantly uh, ha are full of holes like a Swiss cheese and that makes the games so buggy uh, well because of the, uh, one large point. So much, the, the thing that the, so many amateurs do it like that leads us to people that release they, they, their games and they don't even know the nomenclature like uh, releasing a game the game on steam as alpha i'm sorry dude <clears throat> alpha means alpha tests mean that you're testing you it yourself the developers do it themselves the beta testing is when you're when people from outside the company that did not do the developing test it and there's there's either closed beta that uh, people are paid to uh, test the game or open beta, like uh, uh, like games released releasing early for uh, people that kickstarted to test it, or just open open beta where everyone can just go and test it and give their pointers to the developers. And well, I'm I'm like, how is Forest? Uh, released in alpha i'm sorry dude um you're no longer testing it yourself you're making other people test test it you don't even know nomenclature what does it tell us about you and your knowledge about what you're actually doing and you're uh even charging money for it like i'm like do you even lift <laughs> all right all right go on well Forest has already already been out so long, and it's still not considered completed, or even in beta. Even in beta. Mm. Now, like it's, been, well, it's, been, it's been out that this as long as it has, and yet it's still not a, a, been a, uh, a like it's a, 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 officially playable, but it's not exactly officially released. And yet, uh, and yet, the public has been so has been has been so easily. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, like, of course, it's good, it's good to be able to go into beta stuff, but it's like uh, you, you don't really you don't really want to be offering it to the public uh, a half a, a half made game. You want, you want to offer it to a select like select select group, maybe you know. Perhaps uh, dish out a few expertise to a few random people, you know, and then uh, and then actually make it release it where it's actually made. Well, I'll tell you a few things. One about the alpha testing. Often, companies who are making games and do all the the programming and everything for it don't really either have the manpower. To go out of an alpha tested as well for there's so many different firms out there now and companies indie companies usually that are trying to do this and they need money in order to like literally do anything you know you need money to eat you need money to pay rent you need money to fucking do anything right so they're giving you out an alpha version of a game and they say it's an alpha version of the game you can't really lie the, about the that. Moment, Let's be real. The, the moment they give it, uh, they, they give it outside of their own company, it stops being alpha. That's by the. Surely that's not how that works. The de the, de the definition of what that's, a beta by the, the, versus an alpha. I'm playing an alpha of. The, uh, the, the, al the alpha is a is an in test made by the developers. The beta test is a test uh, that is done by people outside of the company. Well, so the moment you release it, even even if you're t even if you're technically still testing it yourself as well, 
the moment it goes even to a single person outside the company, it stops being alpha and moves to the beta phase. That's, that's why we don't that, call that's it by dictionary. Alpha. Well, the truth called is called early access. It's called early access. Yeah, yes, but we look at look at look it. at the forest. They they even state in the game's name, even though it's out for like what two years now. Mm -hmm. It it was stating that it's an alpha version of the game. Yes. No, sir. It is not alpha because it's outside of your company now. Uh, that's slightly wrong. Well, because beta testing well, is think... actually, what it means is, it's not that it's outside the company. It means that this is meant to be the finished product, but we're sending it out to people to test for bugs, etc. And if things come back, then we fix those. Once they're right, then it goes gold. From an actual beta test. Back tester. to basics. <laughs> that's yeah, if you we'll clear this up in like a very simple explanation. Go for it. Alpha means first. Yes. Beta means second. Mm -hmm. Alpha test means first testing, so it's yep. in the first stage of testing. Mm -hmm. Beta means it's in second stage, so it's mostly finished, but they're just checking bugs. Exactly. I have a history in game development. Mm -hmm. I went to college for game development. There you go. So, complaining about them still working on a game isn't very really justified when you have to consider that a lot of these new games that are coming out with the prom like with the publishers they're not just some little indie company with ba with simple graphics mm. they're making games that look like fucking movies as jay commented about quantum break oh man yeah they're getting millions upon millions of dollars of funding to make games with the best possible graphics and engine mm. You have to do a ton of programming to make every single particle effect move realistically, <clears throat> which takes up hours upon hours of time. Some developers in the modern day lose their families because they have to work too much on the game. That's not the developers being cheap. It's the developers trying to make sure that even if the and the movement and basic systems are simple, even if the coding for all of the particle movement and bodily movements, if that all writes itself, they still have to make the assets to put that skeleton onto. Mm. That that is when we that that actually puts us back to the point uh, that the. Uh, publishers with their time limits overwork the developers very often because well, normally uh, the back in the day the games were in the series were released once per two years three years five years and nobody had problems with that because the old game was so good that it lasted for that, that even for that long Naughty no, Dog still the releases the game a year. They've done that for the last decade and a half. But their games don't have as good a graphics as everyone else's. No, as but they're time good at story. <laughs> they do very well at story. Mm. Even Crash Bandicoot had a good story. There you go. But a game like Quantum Break, it needs a time limit because of the hype. Mm. Say that a game is coming out and you give a rough estimate, you have to have it out by that time. Otherwise, people will stop caring. Or it will end up overhyped, and by the time it's released, it's not going to live up to everyone's standards. Final Fantasy XV. Yes, it was an amazing game. I was just about to make that point. <laughs> Ten years in the making. <laughs> they made one mistake. All of that work would have been... No one... They would have had maybe a couple thousand people buy it, and that was that would be it. The word would have gone out that's a buggy piece of shit, and they would have lost millions of dollars that they put into all of the assets for that game. That's why publishing companies have to take so much money from the developers, because the money that went into making that game came out of the publishers' pockets why they are allowed to say what stays and what goes in the game. I'm, in the end, I'm not... It's I'm, their money I, that made it. 
it's okay with me if they uh, point out that you're supposed to do this, this, and this. Anything else you do, it's up to you. But they can't make those uh, time limitations. Final Fantasy XV was in the making for so long, and it's a good game because they gave them uh, they gave them time. We don't care yeah, how long it takes you. Like we don't we don't we don't care how, about how long it takes you. Just make the game actually good, and that I would like. But they often put in those time limitations, which lead to a overworking the developers and causing them some personal problems, or releasing the game in a shit state. Okay. Let me ask you a hypothetical question. Your boss walks in. He hands you a pile of paperwork and says, I need this done by next week. Otherwise, the company is going to go. Have oh, You have your entire week to do it. It's a massive pile of paperwork. What are you, you going to turn around and say, oh, give me a year? If there's, if there's a pile of paper... Uh, put in front of me that is impossible to finish uh, it in a week in the hours I would normally work. I'm sorry, I'm out. You're fucking crazy. It's your fucking problem. It's your bad... Uh, I forgot the word again. Uh, I mean, the, the fish generally starts rotting from the head, not from its ass. So if there, there, uh, sudden, <coughs> suddenly, there shows up shows up a problem that big. It means they did something wrong and ignored the problem for so long, it is basically impossible to to deal with now. It's so game companies. So, so it's not the buyer. developers' fault at this point. And nor nor it would be the the fault of a uh, of a uh, worker in any place if they get uh, if they are asked to do something impossible and cannot finish it in the time in the time limit. Thing is, though, you're missing one crucial point. You're trying to differentiate the developer and the publisher with smaller companies like, say, Chucklefish and Turned Ape, which are the publisher and creator of Star, uh, Stardew Valley. Those are two separate people. Those are two entities. Say Nintendo. The developer and publisher all come back to the same core company. They're both the same thing. The developer is still Nintendo. Workers are still part of Nintendo. The developers are given a time limit. They have to abide by that time limit. Just as much as the publishers have to abide by that time limit. Okay. They're both and given the same restriction. That there are games that are, uh, that are uh, waiting for, that take so much time to develop and are not only more successful because they are better, because they don't have a ton of bugs, because they have the things that were promised, and and are uh, and not only they are more successful in theory, but even though there was more, more time put in it and money put in it, they actually also earn more money for the companies. If your point was the was the right one then it wouldn't matter how good the end product was. The game that was longer in the development would always lose money, which is not a thing. Hmm. Well, take Final Fantasy XV again, for instance. That was 10 years in the making. They released how many games up running into that? They did a Quite well, actually. They did 13... They were, because it was meant to be 13 verses, remember that? That's what it started out as. So yeah. they released 13, 13, 2, 13, 3, 14, and all the expansions on that. 
And I'm sure there was one or two extra there. Um, they actually did a bunch of spin-off games mm -hmm. for handheld systems. But uh, they did all that so they could keep afloat while working on their game. Some companies don't have that option. Yeah. Well, companies so have to get the singular game made. Call of Duty can't make games while working on one individual game. They don't have the amount of power that um, Square Enix has. Sure. Square Enix from software have some of the biggest powers ever. Mm. But Square Enix from soft started, started as Squaresoft. Yep. And yes. Was, and and the, the and first Final Fantasy the first Final Fantasy was made by two men mm -hmm. of which one done all the programming and the other one just made the music. And it is how the Squaresoft started. And times change. Now they don't have to deal with just the programming and the also, music and all that think stuff. That, uh, also, if you think that the game needs incredible money and, in, and God knows how, much, how many men working on it, then you are very wrong if it has to be uh, great. For instance, uh, look at Solus Project. It's a game that is being done by 10 people. Actual, actual pros at programming, <clears throat> but fanboys, they didn't get any funding at the beginning. They only started funding after they, uh, the, they, they were doing it, the, it in their free time and started funding after they had the first chapter released. They only want 18 pounds for a game that is beautiful. It's a survival horror game. Minecrafty game, just like what um, an exploration game, just like No Man's Sky was supposed to be, mm -hmm. just what Minecraft was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, it, and Minecraft beautiful. Beautiful. it sounds beautiful. It's made by it's made with nearly no expenses, and they they don't force you to to pay a lot. Additionally. They are releasing the game in chapters. Once you buy, once you pay the 18 bucks, you get one game that is worth more than most of the games of the same type right now for the same price. <clears throat> and the, uh, all the DLCs, next chapters, or however you want to, to call them, will be added for you for free. You won't have to pay anything. And you will keep getting more and more games. These are all like full games. Additionally, it, it's not only like looks nice. It doesn't only sound nice. It's uh, like, uh, unlike most of the survival games, exploration games, it uh, also has innovative parts, not just blocky shit. And uh, it also uh, has actual storyline. And that's the thing, though. I'm and not it's saying made by that, ten, And uh, it's made by 10 people with pretty much no budget. And how long did they take? To be honest, I didn't ask them. I had, an, I, I had a talk with two of them a few months ago. They're really cool guys, and they... I don't care how much it's go it, it would it will take them. As soon as I actually have enough free money, I will buy it. Even though it is above the fifteen bucks what I normally paid, it's three or four bucks more. It's eighteen or nineteen bucks right now. It is worth it. It's and it's an indie game with no funding, and it's better than. 99% of what we have on market and it's cheaper than 99% of the games we have on market let me ask you this mark simple little thing people are all very different and people will have different opinions we can't paint everybody with the same brush here there are see these guys have gone out of their way and it's super cool what they've done they have not asked for money and they've done all of this. And that's amazing. And it's a huge feat. And I, I, they should be really proud of themselves. 
but that's not every company and we can't just okay, be so, like no sorry that's not the case so let me ask another question go for it if, you, if you'd go to a restaurant yes would you rather get a uh, mashed eggs for 200 bucks but in two minutes mm -hmm. or would you rather wait 30 minutes for a full dish for 10 bucks well that's a pretty easy one i'd wait i have no that's problem waiting and i don't like Simple eggs that much so that you is know. that is why i i really don't want to go to rush things in and i refuse to pay 50 bucks for a half assed game i rather wait and pay the small smaller price for an actually good product and uh, as you can see, uh, the the fact that the game is not only better but also cheaper means that long as uh, development times don't uh, don't mean that you have to uh, that that long wait has to mean you have to you have to spend so much on the development. Well, here's another thing for you: um, the price of something usually has a huge part on how much they think it will sell so if they don't think a game is going to sell well they might just put up the price because they have to make a certain amount of money from it so that way they come even they break even on that breaking even yep that's it so you realize that that a lot of money we pay publishers especially now back in the day uh it was producing those discs burning all those uh, things on on uh, on fuck I forgot oh, the word again. DVDs and HDDs uh, and them on discs. I don't want to bring up inflation. It was like it was like that back in the day. We we paid some something to the publishers because of that because they had to spend money on the on the things. Yeah. Producing right now, physically, you you don't you don't even have to do this because most of the games. Are released on Steam, so you pay That's nothing. That's what I was asking. Do you not think that they, we should they, be paying they, less pu because publishers, of that? Publishers pay nothing compared to what they had to uh, to pay back in the day, and they still charge more. So, do you, do you know where this, these prices come from? Yeah, they're they're literally going advertisement, advertisement, yeah. and it's mostly false advertisement, like with no, Open Sky is just sure. a perfect like, example of that. Ash, we'll let you get your point in there, and then we'll end. Well, No Man's Sky is one isolated case. Call mm -hmm. of Duty generally delivers on what they're advertising. Sure. They're not advertising for the story or any of that bullshit anymore. Mm -hmm. They've given up on the story quite a lot. They're advertising, me they're advertising for the multiplayer modes. And the zombies. <laughs> yes, they release, they release games just to sell the next game. Hmm. Hmm. I know a lot of people frown on that, okay. and a lot of people are going to hate me because I'm defending Call of Duty right now, but they deliver on what they're selling. Yes, the games are overpriced, but the multiplayer mode is what it's for. It sells for the amount it should be worth. Hmm. Yes, we, we also we pay a lot more money than we used to. We also used to have to pay you about 50 cents for a loaf of bread, now it's about 3 or 4 dollars. There you go, that's inflation. Inflation is, inflation is the thing, and I've brought up that point too many times to count at this point. Mm. It's not a matter of we should be paying less, as it is... We want, do you want to have to wait a week to get your bread to be able to eat for that week? Or do you want to be able to walk to the shop at any point in time and get that bread when you, you need you, it? You see, the thing you're missing is that, uh, yes, I know what inflation is uh, and how it works. But as I put on the uh, put it on the in the chat, uh, while all the things got more expensive, their quality either stayed the same or improved while the uh, costs of production uh, more than uh, more than not went up meanwhile with the uh, with publishing uh, with producing and publishing games costs of make of making the games 
uh, of actually making the games, not counting advertisement, went down while we while the prices went up and the quality went down as well. So it's like, why why is it that while everything else is uh, com with, with comparing the pr the price to quality all went up three, four times more expensive. The games went 20, 30 times more expensive. It doesn't add up. Like I've said... Hatter wants to say something. Oh, Leave Hatter to speak. Hatter, Hatter, go ahead. The, uh, the, the important thing I think we have to bear in mind here is that what is being sold is not time, is a product being sold. So, mm -hmm. But... Like that, that has that has that is something that is this is an important uh, thing that should be recognised as you know because you're not buying four hours of a game you're <laughs> buying a game mm -hmm. but at the same time it is a uh, perfectly valid point in that theoretically you could they could uh, go spending you know, dec decades uh, working on developing a game but then. Uh, so, and just but just as you were but uh but you would have a bit but uh because of all the time you would have spent on it you could also like you, you there's a risk like there's a risk that there'll be a lot of oh well, it's on development it's in development oh it's been uh, it's still in development uh it's in development this game is in development oh it's been in development for years mm. uh, so so we, you'll get people just what uh will get people wandering off just because it has been in development, for, just because they know it's been in development for so long, you know. So it's... Bring up that point earlier, is that they need to make the, they need to set that time limit, otherwise people will either overhype it or just leave it. Like, when's the last time you heard of someone complain about Half-Life 3? Yeah, wow. Well, that, that's been in for 20 well. years now. I no heard it yesterday. I, I hear pretty much every day about people that want the Half-Life free now. Yeah, but I think that's more of a joke than anything. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not it's really. really. I mean, there are people that treat it like a meme, but the reason, most, the, most of the people that so long, actually so talk about it, they actually want it. They uh, often still keep playing Half-Life and Half-Life 2 and uh, Half-Life mods. Over and over again. The um, Half-Life 3 has been suspended indefinitely. I should probably <laughs> mention that now. But the reason it took them so long to develop it is because they have other games they need to work on. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to stay afloat. The developers need to work on multiple games, or the publisher have to have multiple games coming out. Otherwise, they end up basically penniless. Did you imagine what would happen if Valve went out of business? That means every single PC game, or at least the PC gaming industry, or the gaming industry as a whole, is going to completely cripple. It's going to keel over and die. The second half goes out of business. We're going to, we're going to all have to move over to Battle.net. Do you want that? Or I don't Origin. Want That's a great end, service that we can game. have. <laughs> there, there's you play which Google basically left. wants Google to left. kill your laptop. I mean, seriously, when I... Uh, a few days ago... I borrowed the Heroes of Might and Magic 7 from Tomix because he bought it, he played it once and refuses to do it. And when I installed Uplay, uh, my, one of my uh, resource uh, control uh, softwares mm -hmm. just decided that he's not going to work in, the, in these circumstances and unceremonially uh, turned itself off with, without even telling me. Wow. That's how hard on the computer is you play. But there's another Bar point. Baru himself argument. said, like, uh, he did it for, was it Gears of War 4, the PC version of it, uh, that he installed you play to play it, and he felt like the moment he turned it on, a part of his computer just died. Mm-hmm. Guys, we're going to have to wrap this up. We've gone 20 minutes over, which is well, huge in the internet. I'm not, can I have one last so, point? Because I, I just brought up something really interesting that I need to bring up. Go on. That's another point that you missed, Smok. That 
the amount of money they have to spend on porting the game to multiple consoles costs actually several millions just to adjust it for the specs of each console individually. Meaning games that end up on but what where, the, where the does this cost computer. but where does this cost come from oh it's the programming isn't it you need to program it for every single architecture that okay which... then how is solus project uh, being able to be this great without uh funding because they're only well, programming the, it the, 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 the developing costs itself are near to none what we pay for is advertisement well, and, you don't advertise your game and the pie for the directors of the publishers. You know the likelihood the, 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 of getting the, your game sold. And I'm I'm not gonna speed roast. I know else. that I uh, sound angry, but I'm not gonna speed roast all the uh, com all the uh, gaming industry because there still are games that are uh, pretty cheap and pretty awesome. The, just look at what uh, Mountain Blade started as, or Binding of Isaac. The game itself at the beginning cost three bucks, and it and was done by one guy, and it still lives on, and it's still uh, it, the the new releases are still pretty cheap. There are games out there that are not advertised. Pretty much, uh, Binding of Isaac was not advertised at all at the beginning. It was given live because uh, the guy actually went to one convention and uh, showed it to a few uh, middle-sized streamers. The streamers advertised it pretty much for free for him. But and but... there are and there are more more games like that that are nearly nearly free and are great and. I believe that the way to uh, to cure, to heal the, the the industry, is to stop paying those ridiculous prices for half-assed games, where there are products so cheap that are so great, and also that prove the fact that that there are games that even if they were developed for God knows how long, and still are cheap and still bring L F Fucked on of profit to the developers are the proof that the game that the uh, developing uh, costs are not that high and that we don't really have to pay that much. Also, if you the prices aren't that high because it's so uh, so expensive to develop those games or publish those games, but because the publishers just try more and more to try how much. Will people actually pay to get something so overhyped for absolutely no reason? And as long as there will be people paying those ridiculous money, they will they will keep going higher and higher with the prices. So oh. pretty much people that buy most of those products waste their money on some they pay five times more for a game that is half as good. So well, they so they are wasting um, their money because they are because they are lazy and can't really think for themselves. Well, let's let's raise this this just round this up with one last hypothetical. Mm -hmm. What do you suppose would happen to the gaming industry if every major gaming publisher, which is the source of Smog's anger at the moment, if every major gaming publisher went completely bankrupt and disappeared and it was only indie developers that had spent years and years of their work on all of their games what would happen um pretty much nothing much because yeah there would be like a hundred, hundred times less games or maybe even less than that than a hundred times less but the games out there wouldn't be so ridiculously expensive the games actually released would be mostly the quality they used to be. Back in the day, publisher, publishers weren't really that that often seen, and the gaming industry still worked. It's not that the publishers are there because the industry needs them. 
it's that the publishers are there because there there's the money for them to earn it's not the other way around both both um, the past proves it and the fact that there still are indie games that are cheap and great prove it as well and what about you other two what do I think would ha- oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Uh, what what right. I think would actually happen is, have you guys seen that episode of South Park where they all go to like to the big mart, and it's like, oh no, it's taking over everything, and they're like, we'll never go to that big mart again, and then instead they go to the little mart, and then the little mart gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and the same fucking thing happens. That's honestly what I think would happen. What, what about you, Hada? Because you have not been able to say that. You much. have not been able to say much. Uh, I apologize for that. This is, uh, that's right. This is this part, uh, I'm not, not the brightest spark, but uh, like uh, what what Jay says sounds uh, pretty fitting. Although what has been running through a lot from my head, really, for a lot of the discussion, uh, is um, is uh, was a game that uh, like an old game that was actually brought down is Fluffy Birds. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we remember like, that one. Like, uh, like that, like that, 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 that wasn't really a majorly de- uh, developed game, but the, uh, like the guy, uh, the guy like made a fortune on there, but he actually, uh, he himself put put the game down, and people were just putting up, like basically pirate copy versions, just because, like he took it down because he just went insane, and to be honest, for most of it. Most of the talk, that's just what's been running through my head for some reason. Hmm. Makes sense. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my view on my own hypothetical. Sure. No question. I might as well. I believe that it would probably just cripple the gaming industry as a whole in general. Hmm. There's no major publishers. That means that anybody can make a game and market it because people have indie games to look for. Sure. So even if the games aren't taking years and years of development for us to have to wait that whole time playing the same goddamn game for the the next 10 years of our lives, we'd still have to wait for the good games to surface above all the weird stank that people have made. Look at YouTube, look at um, Steam Greenlight, for instance. Mm. Seen how many terrible games are in there using base assets? <laughs> a lot. There is a lot of those. Using, using a few examples of indie games being successful. Summarize the point. Isn't very efficient. With published games, we get at least some degree of promise. Mm-hmm. Even though, fans like like no. Sky was fairly disappointing. We can all agree that at least it looked pretty and it was at least fun to play for maybe an hour. True. But with an indie game that looks, sounds, and plays terribly, I would much rather play No Man's Sky. Yeah. Say another random Steam zombie game that uses the same assets as every other Steam zombie game. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of those around. Right? When a game has set standards even if it's more expensive that means you at least have quality assurance mm. quality, quality assurance sh- yeah about is a good thing that's like you yeah like the um, no man's sky is not the only uh not the only example of uh, look at uh, shadow warrior 2 for example it's we're not getting into it i'm sorry we are the, not the same we are 30 thing minutes over no man's sky Smock it's stop. expensive. It was uh, debt. You know I'm right. I, I, think, I think that I think I think that probably the best way best way to go is that I think I, I would say perhaps the best way to go says we need we need indie games. We also need uh, some of those high high leveled published games because you know probably some of, uh, some of those high published games probably were originally started out as indie games. This hmm. is why we need indie games. Which is also the fact that a lot of indie games don't tend to focus on what the genre, same genres as play games. So I could play, yeah, sure, I could play Stardew Valley for hours, and that's a farming um, 
strategy RPG kind of game. Sure. But if that was all that was available, how do you think all the COD players would feel? Yeah. Without yeah. first person shooters being made yeah. by mass. That's they would it. have nothing we... to play ever. The only thing I can put down... They have to get jobs and lives. Yeah, they gotta do all this. I know, it's weird. It's it's a weird thing to try to do. Anyway, the biggest thing is everybody is different. Everybody has an opinion. And everybody likes different things. And thank God that we have the choice to do these things. That's all. Hashtag Team Ash. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hashtag Team Ash. Yeah, of course. Ash, the destroyer of lungs, as you are now known. Anyway, guys, let's do a quick sign out. Uh, it was a very nice debate. I liked it. We'll do more of this. Next week, what are we talking about? Are we talking about... Uh, um, gaming addictions, I believe. Gaming addiction, that's right, yes. We'll go do gaming addictions. And what our saddest and lowest moments in life have been with, with games, I guess. Um, so in the yeah. meantime, guys, thank you very much for being here. I'm Dad. This is where you guys can sign out. Smoke. We we'll, we'll do it. We we'll do it left to right. Sure. So J Dad so smart. I'll go. Me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we are so coordinated <laughs> on this. I'm J Dad. We should have worked this up. Should have worked this up before the stream. Yeah, we totally should have. Okay. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. I'm J Dad. I'm Smark. There we go. And I'm Ash. I'm Hatter. Fucking, that was beautiful, everyone. Nice job. Good on you. <laughs> Good on you. That was the best part of this whole fucking thing. Anyway, thank you lots. See you tomorrow. It's Family Fun Day. We're playing Guild Wars 2, and we're going to be the prettiest fucking princesses ever. So I'll see you guys later. Love you lots. Bye. I'm going to be playing Stardew Valley. Bye. In your addictive little hole. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Enjoy. Have fun, everybody, and don't hate me.